Amen, amen, amen. Good morning, MCC Baltimore. Good morning, Facebook. Good morning, everyone who is joining us uh, from around the world. We thank you, first off, for joining us on this wonderful morning, this wonderful Sunday morning, first pride, first Sunday in the month of pride, as we, we get to celebrate who we are, the way God created us to be in the earth, and how God wonderfully knitted us in our in the womb of that person who created us and birthed us into the space. So what I am, my name is Pastor Venice, folks, and I am here this morning to actually invoke and help us invoke the Spirit of the Lord into our presence. Now, I know we believe that the Spirit of the Lord is always with us, and that is true. God is always with us. Sometimes, however, we wake up with burdens on our hearts or worry and doubt in our mind, and what a better way to prepare our Sunday worship encounter experience than reminding ourselves just how good God is. So if you can just join me for a brief moment, don't forget to put in Facebook a good morning, as well as where you're joining us from, whether that be Baltimore, county, the city, surrounding counties, let us know. Give a shout out so we can give you a shout out. Amen. And let's invoke the spirit of the Lord together. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Creator, we thank you, O oh God. Hallelujah. We thank you for waking us up this morning in our righteous mind. Hallelujah. We thank you, O oh God, for another moment on this side of glory, on this side of earth to dwell in human form, to give you the glory and the honor that is due unto you. God, we thank you for another day. Hallelujah. We thank you for another hour, another minute, and another second. We know that you are a God who has been faithful through the hands and the sands of time. God, we are wonderful. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. You're, you're glorious, God, and there's none like you in all the earth. Uh, or the scripture says that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that you are God and you are wonderful in the Lord alone. And so right now, oh God, we ask, oh Lord, that first that you forgive us of anything that will inhibit us from being able to experience your glory and your honor on this morning. Forgive us for anything that will uh, try to impede itself for us being able to sit in your presence and bask in your wonder. God, we thank you, O oh Lord, that you forgive us of all things, Lord God, those things that are known and unknown, seen and unseen. And we ask, Lord God, that you continue to remember us in this space as we lift up your, your name in all the earth and we glorify you in front of our family and friends, in front of the people who may say we're not able to do so, God, we give you the glory. Hallelujah. Oh, with the first fruits of our lips, we will declare into the earth just how excellent you are. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord God, as you make our feet like deers and hind feet and put us up on high places of protection, oh God. As you are the God, hallelujah, that makes ways out of no ways, hallelujah, we give you the glory. As you are God who opens the windows of heaven and pours out blessings that we have no room to receive, we give you the honor. Oh God, you are, oh ancient of days, hallelujah. If we could declare of your goodness, it would not amount to the the the, the the worthy, the worth and the worthiness you are due in this season and every moment of our lives. Hallelujah, oh God, you're wonderful. You are excellent. And we call you by many names. Oh, by name called Jehovah Jireh. We call you and we honor you in this space. Oh, Elohim and El Shaddai. We call you and honor you in this space. Oh, Jehovah Shalom, our peace. Jehovah Sikhenu. We honor you in this space. Oh, God, you the consuming fire God. Hallelujah. You the God who moves mountains and destroys. Is Goliath said it about Shah. You, the God who makes dreams manifested in this season, you we honor you in this space every moment of every part of who you are. God, we give you the, uh, the, the ability to come into our homes, Lord God, to come and to just dwell with us. God, find us worthy that your spirit, hallelujah, will commune with us on this morning. God, hallelujah, allow it to be a visceral response. Allow us to be able to feel you, Lord God, as if your pulse and our fingers were on your pulse. That's how, that's how close uh, this Pride Sunday we want to be to you, Lord God. As you allow us, Lord God, to be as we are. And you reclaim us. Hallelujah. Not that we ever was lost. But we understand the reclaiming. Hallelujah. That's being 
you've done in this season. As on things that have been caused to be caused to harm us, it will be broken. Uh, we thank you, Lord God, that you are a liberating God. Oh God, we thank you that you are the restoration God. Oh God, I reclaim in this season everything that has been. We thank you, Lord, that that's the God you are. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. We're claiming those who have been pushed aside by church doctrine. You're reclaiming them in this season. We thank you, oh God. Hallelujah for the reclaiming spirit, Lord God. You're calling them back into your bosom as they come wonderfully dressed and ordained in rainbow. So I got to thank you that there will be healing from the doctrine of bondage in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. We thank you, oh God. It's in this place and in this moment. We give you the God that's reclaiming us. They never lost us. Hey, God, hallelujah. They never lost tabs on us. They never forgot about us. But you are the God that are that is breaking every chain. Hallelujah. Breaking every word. Healing every wound that man has said that you said about us. And we thank you for it in this pride season. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. That you are the God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. That reclaims us back to her own. Now have your way, oh Lord. Have your way, have your way in the service on this morning. Hey God, have your way, have your way that people's lives will be touched by the guest speakers on this morning. Have your way, oh Lord, hallelujah, in people's lives and in their homes. That every need will be supplied and every malnourishment provided and pro with provision. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that your hands are in the service, that your hands are in the technology, that your hands are every part of our lives. Bless the expediter, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, and bless everyone whose hands are a part of the service. God, we give you the glory for those who will be touched in live moment of watching and by the replay. Hallelujah, that their lives will be forever changed. It is in your precious name, hallelujah, that we give you the glory and the honor, that we invoke your spirit into our space. It is by your precious name of Jesus, hallelujah, and by the blood of the Lamb, hallelujah, that we cover ourselves with affirmation this morning knowing that we can be who we are love who we love and you have still called us to speak your word to the people hallelujah thank you lord on this wonderful sunday the first sunday of june in jesus name we pray amen Amen and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Facebook, give the God of your understanding. Hallelujah. The God of pride. Yes, Lord. Hearts and thumbs up on Facebook this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us. Again, my name is Pastor Venice. Please stay with us. Hallelujah. Service will officially start around 10 a.m. Amen. Amen. God, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.
Happy Pride, happy Pride, happy Pride. I am so excited this morning. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you. Oh, let us start up with the 26th division of Psalms, verses 2 through 3. Test me, Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind, for I am always been mindful of your unfailing love and have lived in resonance of your faithfulness. Selah, amen. And this has been your call to worship. My, 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 my. Welcome to MCC Baltimore's Worship Encounter. I am Minister Lee Savoy, and I am so glad and happy to welcome you. I'm so glad that you decided to join us on this beautiful first Sunday of Pride. I know, don't know what you've come to do, but I know I have come to magnify the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, hallelujah. We're asking everyone to like, tag, and share this post. Please give me some holy thumbs up and some hearts as we prepare for our first song, My, 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 Still Holy. <laughs> Still Holy once was and always will be still holy. Amen.
Oh, hallelujah, 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 you're still holy. Thank you, Lord, you're still holy. Yes, and we're still asking people to give us the holy thumbs up and the heart as we welcome everyone to our virtual worship here in MCC Baltimore this morning. And please don't forget to give everyone in your household a holy hug and a fist pound. The words of affirmation for the month of June is to decree and declare, to affirm and to agree that I was created in the image of God. My, 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 my. Let that sink in a minute. I was created in the image of God. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Some, sometimes we, we get that. And, and particularly on Pride, Pride Month, we need to remember that. And that is found in Genesis 1, verse 27. Mm -mm -mm. Well, let's start with some announcements. What a great time we had last Sunday worshiping virtually with our MCC kids. Yes, 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 yes. Let's give them a round of virtual applause and likes and hearts because they did a fantastic job. Thank you again, Minister Ray, for your service to MCC kids. Let's not forget their challenge to donate $20. Yes. Yeah. $20 to MCC Baltimore's Food Pantry in your weekly contributions. Just label the donation Food Pantry. Amen, amen, amen. And on that note of the Food Pantry, we continue to have five dinner bags for those in need. MCC Baltimore, if you know of a family in need, we are asking you to tell us about them and tell them about our food pantry. Have them contact us at info at mccbaltimore.com. Again, info at mccbaltimore.org. Sorry about that. MCC Baltimore, info at mccbaltimore.org. We are looking for members to join the food pantry preparation team. If interested, please contact us. That is such a beautiful ministry. My, my, my. MCC Baltimore's Gospel Explosion. Yes, 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 yes. The Gospel Explosion is this Saturday, June 12th at 6 p.m. right here on Facebook Live. I can't wait. I can't. I'm sorry. I'm just pumped today. I am pumped. I am pumped. If if you party with us before, you know that our gospel explosions are ones not to be missed. Yes, come on and celebrate all the gifts and talents. Laugh a little, shout a little, dance a little. Come on, come on, come on, come on. This Saturday, June 12th, MCC Baltimore's Gospel Explosion right here at Facebook Live, 6 p.m., you got to join us there. Yes, 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 yes. And we're also so excited about our June Bible study theme as we celebrate pride. We have a thing called the clobbering, the clobber passages. Please join us every Wednesday as we affirm you through scripture. You know, that is so important. We will affirm you through scripture. This is a teaching series, so come prepared with your tools to take some good notes and dialogue on this very important topic that has kept LGBTQIA plus community allies and friends. This week, we will uncover the truth of Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -mm -mm. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this will liberate you. This will change your life. Meditation starts at 7.15 p.m., and we will jump right into it at 7.30. Mm-hmm. <laughs> our love is holy. Yes, our love is holy. What better way to honor pride than to celebrate the love of God? This love that God shares with us 
and that we share with one another. This Pride Month, MCC Baltimore, we are hosting a different couple every week, offering us various displays of love of God continues to offer us. Join us here virtually every Sunday, invocation, prayer, and announcements at 945, and worship encounter at 10 a.m. Yes, yes, yes. And today, 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 oh, please hang around with me as we welcome to MCC Baltimore via chat and chew Dr. Molly Young Harris as we're chatting with her on the topic of decreasing HIV infection in the LGBT plus communities, particularly the older communities. Grab your snack and your beverage and come back and join me right here on Facebook Live at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. Amen. 12 noon. And you know, as COVID restrictions continue to change, we are encouraging everyone to keep reading the e-news as we continue to communicate the next steps and reopening plans. We thank you for your perseverance in and through this national crisis. This pandemic has shown and proven to us that the ministry is beyond the walls. Amen, amen, amen. Again, I am Minister Lee Savoy and these have been your ministerial announcements. And now folks, guess what? It is that time, it is that time. It's time that we get to celebrate all those going into another year of God's blessing. If your birthday has been in the month of June, yes, <laughs> pride, happy pride. Please put your comment, put your name in the comment section, everyone. Let's show our love to our MCC Baltimore family and friends at this time. Please don't forget, we love to celebrate accomplishments. So if you also are celebrating the anniversary in the month of June, please put it in the comments. Maestro, please say it.
Good morning, good morning, Facebook. Good morning, MCC Baltimore. I am Pastor Venice Folks. Thank you so much for the prayer requests and the solicitations that were added on Facebook. Um, I'm grateful for uh, your co-pastor, my wife, Pastor Pam, who was able to give me a list. I am unable to see y'all's prayer requests. So, I, so if you have prayer requests that do not get spoken, I'm asking you to join me in that moment of prayer and know that God is hearing your request, even if it doesn't come out of my mouth. Amen. It's a communal experience. Let us go before the throne. Amen. Dear Heavenly Creator, we thank you, oh God. Hallelujah. Oh God, we thank you that we can fill you in this space, Lord God. Your spirit is definitely upon us and in us and around us. It is exactly how we requested this morning. It is a palpable and a visceral, hallelujah, experience as we are connecting with you, the divine, and you, the divine, are connecting with us. And as we individually and collectively collectively have a connective dance, hallelujah, of spirit and mind and soul with you. God, we thank you for remembering us on this first Sunday in pride. God, we love you. Hallelujah. We love you, O oh Lord, hallelujah, with everything that we're capable of loving you with. God, we thank you, O oh Lord, that you woke us up and you blessed us and you continue to bless us from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. God, we thank you, Lord, in Abashata, that you are shield, a shield around us and our glory, the lifter of our heads, even in times when we think we've been defeated and misery has, has been our company. God, we thank you that you are God who turns over, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The coin. So things that have been made to destroy us, oh God. You work it out for our good. God, we thank you, oh Lord. That we worship a God. That sees our beginning, our middle and our end. Oh God, you are God. And because of that, because you see the entire picture of our life, you know the obstacles and the situations that we will endure and go through. Hey, God, that you being our shepherd and the one who leads us and guides us in every situation, Lord God, will tell us when to rest, when to lay down, when to get up and when to walk. You will tell us when to war and when to stand still and be at peace. And with this assurance, oh God, hallelujah, we come before you with some requests on our minds and some requests in our hearts. So, oh God, we thank you, Lord God, that when you birthed us, when you, when you created us, oh God, you gave us family. Lord. Some families, oh God, are, are blood families, and many families, oh God, are those who have been created and those that have that continue to thrive because of heart relationships, uh, covenant relationships of respect uh, and mutuality. God, regardless of the family we're in, uh, God, we ask that you protect the people that we call family. Oh God, we ask right now in the name of Jesus, you you protect the people we call love and beloved. Uh, God, we ask that you you surround yourself uh, in your glory and your blood and of our around, oh God, our parents, birth and other, Lord God, our spiritual parents, Lord God, our God parents, oh God, our mentor parents, cover them right now in the name of Jesus, oh, whatever they stand in need of, Lord God, provide, God, right now in the name of Jesus, we ask that you cover our children, our birth children, Lord God, our biological children, and those in which we are mentoring, oh God, in the name of Jesus, those who have become under our 
our wings of protection in the name of God. We thank you, Lord God, that you are even now creating space and pathways for them to be successful, Lord God, and to maneuver in the world in a way in which community dwells and community thrives and situations are changed. God, we thank you for the youth, Lord God, and how they will lead us and guide us and keep us and support us. God, right now in the name of Jesus, we rebuke the spirit of death plaguing the city of Baltimore, plaguing different places of lives. God, we thank you even now that their understanding of life, their understanding of dignity, their understanding of respect is shifting, oh God. Hallelujah. God, we ask, oh God, that value, we learn to love one another, Lord God, in a way in which it becomes a contagious thing. Contagious love, Lord God. Let it thrive in the earth right now in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for siblings, be they blood siblings or other siblings. Right now in the name of Jesus, we ask that you protect our siblings. Protect those we call brother and sister. Protect those we call them and they. Right now in the name of Jesus, protect everybody, Lord God, who is family, both blood and spirit in the name of Jesus. And since we are all connected, we are expecting you and we are thanking you in advance for keeping our family safe. Oh God, we thank you, oh Lord, hallelujah for keeping our family safe right now in the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you, oh Lord, in this season of creativity and ingenuity, and innovation and entrepreneurship. God, you've birthed businesses into our lives. You've given us blueprints and you've downloaded them into us. God, and we put them on paper and we made it plain. And so God, right now in the name of Jesus, we ask Lord God that every piece of paper that has a business name on it, that the paper be shifted in a way that favor will fall upon it right now. God, we speak favor of resources. We speak favor, Lord God. Hallelujah. We block anything the enemy will try to do from preventing the business, from preventing the vision. We rebuke every obstacle that will try to stop it from becoming fruition and from living in the earth. We thank you, Lord God. We prayed about this two Sundays ago, that our businesses will live because they are businesses that will allow your people to be whole and well. And so God, we rebuke, hallelujah, any attempt to destroy, to seek out and devour, hallelujah, the blueprints, to, to devour, Lord God, and block the blessing. We rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you, Lord God, that you've given us the discipline to follow through. Oh, that which has been implanted in us to do in the season and for your kingdom. Hey, God, I thank you, oh Lord, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God, I thank you, Lord God. I block. I'm going to stay right there right now. In the name of I rebuke any blockage. Oh, I rebuke the spirit of confusion and chaos when it comes to businesses. Oh God, I thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Even now, licenses that were upheld and being withhold are being released in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I thank you, Lord, that permits are being distributed right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, no longer when they say you will not be owned. We thank you for every nonprofit organization and charity. Hey God, every grassroots movement. Every business. Hey God, we're right now that is being birthed in this season. God, we thank you for the money and the resources for the people. Oh God, for the support. Hey, protect the vision, oh God. Oh, by your spirit it was birthed by your spirit it will be brought to life and by your spirit it will exhale it will excel in the world hallelujah God and while you're protecting our businesses God we ask right now in the name of Jesus that you go to those uh, who are dealing oh God oh with addictions in the name of Jesus uh, oh they're dealing Lord God with substance abuse uh, they're dealing oh God with, with situations of satisfaction that will cause them to lose their life. God, we ask, oh God, that there be a, a, a divine intervention in the name of Jesus, a intervention that only you can do, oh God, that the needle won't hit right now, that the snore no, will no longer give the power that 
they used to. God, we ask that even the liquor, the alcohol, whatever the addiction be, even sex, oh God, whatever it is, that it will no longer do and give the, the, the desire and satisfaction that it used to so that the healing can come. And God, we thank you for the village. We thank you for the villages. We thank you for the people surrounding those who are dealing and fighting, Lord God, right now with addictions, looking for a way to be whole. Lord God, we ask that you allow the villages not to get tired. Allow the villages not to give up on them. And that the villages will be soaked and submerged with compassion in the name of Jesus. That it doesn't matter how many times we see them strung out. We see them prostrate and laid out. We see them messy, Lord God, that we will be moved to love them as you have loved them and loved them because they are our own. They are our family. Oh God, hold it up. Hey, we cover them in the blood. Oh, right now we rebuke the spirit of addiction. We rebuke the spirit of addiction and we speak healing. We speak healing in the name of Jesus. Hold it up. Oh, if you're one dealing with addiction, speak over your body right now. Say, I am healed in the name of Jesus. And as you're healed, hallelujah, now seek the help you need. God, again, we thank you for the resources. We thank you for the doctors, Lord God. Uh, we thank you for the social workers, Lord God. We thank you for those who, who maneuver in these spaces. Uh, nurse practitioners, oh God. Oh, uh, physicians assistants. Uh, God, we thank you, Lord God, for those who specialize with hands of healing for those who deal with addiction. God, we thank you for the healing. We thank you for the healing. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, oh God. Hallelujah. We thank you for the recovery. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Give God the praise for the recovery. We thank you in advance. Hallelujah. For the recovery of addictions. Hallelujah. We thank you in advance. Yes, God, we give you the glory for the recovery. And we thank you that we'll see him dressed in their right mind. Where the stain that used to be be there, there'd be a button up, eh, yeah, God, in the name of Jesus, uh, oh my God, today, where there'll be, when, once, when there be once, when there once, once lack of com comprehension, uh, there'll be clarity of speech and thought, in the name of, we thank you, God, hallelujah, for working that out, uh, we thank you, oh Lord, yes, God, that there'll be goals and ambition, uh, and that the village, hallelujah, will continue to uphold them and uplift them in this time, oh God, hallelujah, we thank you, oh God, and while you're, you're you're dealing with those with addiction, Lord God, and you're visiting them and healing them, Lord God. We pray with those, for those with mental distresses. Hallelujah. Mental distresses, Lord God. Whatever those mental distresses may be, God. Hallelujah. The mind and the brain is a, a wonderful organ. We know it's beautiful, Lord God. The electrical current. Hallelujah. And the hormonal regulation that occurs in the mind, oh God, is so wonderful. And, and we understand that the smallest thing can cause an imbalance. And that imbalance can lead us and cause us to do things, Lord God, that, that we would not normally do. And so right now, in the name of Jesus, we speak homeostasis back to the mind, back to the emotional state and regulation. We speak homeostasis back to hormonal regulation, so that every mental situation, every mental stress, Lord God, will be taken care of, Lord God. Allow us to know when to take our medicine and to be disciplined enough to do so. Allow us to know when to reach out when the thoughts of suicide and depression are are taken over. God, allow us to seek the resources at our disposal to talk to the psychiatrists and the psychologists and again, the social workers and the counselors that are there for us to be well and whole in the earth. Oh God, we thank you. Even those who are wandering now, they're wandering with mental stress and they're looking for hope. God, allow us to be attentive and aware of their needs. Oh, that it is no one's desire to be in mental distress. Give us compassion. Oh, God, right now, in the name of Jesus, for those dealing with mental distresses, Lord God. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for the remnant that you're raising in this season who will take care of your people in all manner and ways in which you've called us to do so. And God, we thank you that healing will come in various forms. Hallelujah. Not just by divine miraculous touch of wellness, but, but by our own participation 
of including the resources and the tools that you have given us to be whole and well in the earth. Right now, Lord God, see our hearts as they lay before you, willing and ready for you to do whatever it needs for us to be whole in the earth. God, we love you. Hallelujah. We thank you in advance for honoring every prayer request that has been spoken by my mouth, Lord God, and by your people's mouth, who was not able to put their prayer request in the comment section, or I was not able to see. God, we thank you in advance for honoring them, Lord God, all of them, that you hear them all the same, Lord God. We give you the glory, we cover every prayer request in the blood of Christ, that it will reach your ears, oh God, hallelujah, and that your response, hallelujah, if it is well with us, it will be well with you, hallelujah, to give us a resounding yes. Uh, it is in your most precious name, hallelujah, that we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you all. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Oh, thank you, Pastor, for that prayer. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank and praise your holy name. And we thank you, Lord, for being you. Well, family, it's that time. It's offering time. Yes, 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 yes. And let me tell you, let's 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 be real about it. As we start gearing up back into our houses, you know, our, our spiritual houses, we, we we need an increase. We need an increase. Um We need an increase. <laughs> uh, please, please, you know, give what you can. Uh, trust me, I believe me. I know it's tough to give what you can. And how can you give what you can? Easy. Well, you can text GIVE, G-I-V-E, to 844-526-6222. Again, that's GIVE, G-I-V-E, to 844-562-6222. Two, two, or we have PayPal. You can make it to Metropolitan Community Church of Baltimore. Amen. Amen. Again, PayPal is Metropolitan Community Church of Baltimore. And if you want to text it, text GIVE to 844-526-6222. Thank you. Amen, amen. You got to love yourself. Yes, yes, yes. And what a gift it is to love 
thyself. Ma, 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 ma. Well, we'll have our preparation song, and then we will hear a wonderful message of love from um, Reverend Lori and her wife, Jesse. Amen, amen, amen. This will bless you. I'm telling you, it will bless you. I was in the third grade, I thought that I was gay, cause I could draw, my uncle was, and I kept my room straight, I told my mom, tears rushing down my face, she's like, Ben, you've loved girls since before pre-K, tripping, yeah, I guess she had a point, didn't she, bunch of stereotypes, all in my head, I remember doing the math, like, yeah, I'm good at Little League, a preconceived idea of what it all meant, but those that like the same sex, have the characteristics, the right wing conservatives, think it's a decision, and you can be cured with some treatment and religion, man made rewiring of a predisposition, playing God, oh nah, here we go, America the brave, still fears what we don't know, and God loves all his children, it's somehow forgotten, but we paraphrase a book written 3,500 years ago, I don't know, and I can't change Even if I tried Even if I wanted to Amen, amen, amen. The devil is a liar as we go through technical difficulties. Oh, here we go, starting slow. Amen, Facebook. Welcome for joining joining us on this wonderful Sunday experience. I am Pastor Venice Folks. And I am Pastor Pamela Folks. And we are here and excited about Pride's series amen this series is not a preaching series per se it is a guest speaking series where every week we'll have guests come in and talk to us about their their love those who are lgbtq identified so at this moment what we want to do is we want to introduce our guests for this evening it's going to be reverend Lori mcpherson and her wonderful wife jesse ahart welcome welcome to mcc baltimore we really appreciate you guys for joining us on this evening amen and so when we thought about this series, what we really wanted to do was make sure that we had the opportunity to advertise our love the way we wanted to in the world. One of the things that we know is that LGBTQIA love is not monolithic. It's not homogenous. We don't all interact and think the same way as humans and let alone in relationships. But what better way to really give a display and honor to the different ways we can love one another than by having special guest speakers to come to us today. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Amen. So I want to give an opportunity for Pastor Pam to introduce the other people we have in the room. And then if our special guest couples will introduce themselves. Yes, yes. We had Minister Lisa Boyd joining us on today and Minister Ray Lewis. And we just want to say on behalf of MCC Baltimore, everyone, happy Pride. Happy Pride. 
Happy yes. Pride. Amen. What better way to kick <laughs> off this month with the Our Love is Holy session? We need people to know when we came out of the closet, we did not come out alone. Amen. <laughs> right? So let's celebrate our love through this Pride <laughs> season. Amen. All right. If, you, if uh, Reverend Lori McPherson and uh, Jesse would like to, would you like to give us a little introduction? Just very brief, like uh, what you do. Sure. Um, I, I am a community activist and I work in, uh, I got my degree in uh, public policy. And I did that because of what was happening in Baltimore. Um, I'd been working in a lot of other fields, done a lot of things for a long time and um, was satisfied and loved my work. But um, between Freddie Gray and some of the other things that were going on in the city, I was called to get more busy to get some education and come back more useful to the people here, able to do things for the community that I wasn't able to do before. Um, so I'm with a group called Communities United. Hopefully you've seen or heard a little bit about us. Um, and we work in Baltimore's low to moderate income communities uh, doing grassroots organizing. So lifting up people's own organizing, um, teaching people to raise themselves up. Um, and what they can do to help each other and become more active and engaged with what's going on in the world around them. And this is my life. <laughs> <laughs> hey everybody, um, I'm Reverend Lori McPherson. I serve at uh, MCC of Northern Virginia right now with uh, Reverend Emma Chatton. And I've been down there, it's part-time um, for a couple of years now. Uh, doing, you know, guest preaching and all manner of kind of backup, fill in, whatever Emma needs me to do. I've been ordained MCC clergy since 2006 and have uh, started coming to MCCs back in 1997. So I'm kind of uh, coming up on 25 years, which is kind of frightening. Since I'm only 19, it's really <laughs> scary that, that I've been doing this this long. Mm -hmm. um, my day job, I'm a lawyer by trade. Um, and uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, so there you go. Awesome. Thank you both for joining us and, uh, and dedicating your time not to the people. Both of you have very much sacrificial jobs and occupations that you live in vocation into the world. So thank you for that. We do know Communities United as they were on Minister Lee Savoy's chat and chew. Um, what is it, the month of March? Or was it February? Might have been April. Anyway, you know. So what? So we do know it was about April. That. It was April. Okay. So so thank you for that. And again, the uh, being a lawyer, if for any people who don't know, um, Reverend Lori is always throwing out type of real historical modern historical facts or modern facts in the legal realm especially when political stuff is going down so <laughs> i love that about both of you how your passions have literally led you to the earth in the world so thank you so much for sharing that all right so what we want to do is we want to talk just very briefly about we're going to talk about we're going to introduce the topic right so every sunday um mcc baltimore family we're going to have a different topic for our guests couples this week's topic is just the two of us and mm -hmm. we're going to let um jesse and reverend Lori talk about what that phrase means to them for their relationship and then we're going to show the scripture that they were going to and they had to kind of focus in on so we gave them time to kind of meditate on thought processes about the scripture and whether or not it you know did it resonate with their relationship did it not and you know <laughs> it may not have and that's okay and so it's good for us just to have conversation to see where we may be able to show up in scripture even as lgbtqia couples in relationships but pastor pam can you read the scripture for us sure song of solomon chapter 8 verses 6 through 7 set me as a seal upon your heart as a seal upon your arm for love is strong as death Jealousy is as fierce as the grave. Its flashes are flashes of fire, the very flame of the Lord. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can floods drown it. And that's the e Eastern Standard English, English, English Standard, standard Version. Amen. <laughs> Or Eastern. 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 Hey. Hey. So no one's going to correct you. It's all right. <laughs> if you knew my, my secular career, you'll know where that came from. <laughs> amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. So we're going to get started with our first question of the evening. And, and ministers will have questions. They'll find us out in the end. Okay. So this is our first question. How long have you been together? What? 
<laughs> we, explained, <laughs> we explained earlier that Jesse doesn't count, um, like doesn't actually count, like one, two, three, four, five, six, like she doesn't do that. So we started dating in uh, 2007. Um, <laughs> At, at the end of 2007 and we got married in uh the, at the end of, <laughs> we got married in december of 2013 so um we've been together for 13 14 years now um so yeah yeah it's been a minute right <laughs> yeah. yeah you know past 10 i'm like we're in double digits it's all good you stop counting <laughs> y'all, y'all pass all, the honeymoon phase for sure yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> No, I'm like, y'all about to get pre <laughs> <laughs> oh Yes. The pre Amen. So yeah. All right. Well, Jesse, maybe you can you can take a stab at this one. How did okay. you both meet? Yeah, how did we meet? <laughs> well, I got you, Jesse. <laughs> we're at a party and um we had interacted earlier in the party and I kind of just I I was hosting, so I got everybody, you know getting together and making sure everyone had met everyone and done all the rest of that. And I was wiped out. Um, it was a day like today where I've done a ton before that. And I had sat down on the couch and was just like ready, deciding whether or not I was just going to leave. <laughs> and Lori came and sat down on the couch beside me and, um, and was flirting with me. And I was really not like emotionally available. I had uh, just been broken up with the day before <laughs> by a short-term girlfriend. And I was like, that's it. I'm out. I'm going to go meet somebody else. So hi, how you doing? <laughs> and so um, in response to that question where I was actually leaving, I'm like, you know, great to meet you. You're cute. It's all good. It's fine. Great conversation. And I'm taking off now. I'll catch you around. The usual question, like, can I have your phone number? I'm like, I can give you my phone number, but I'm not going to pick up the phone because I, yeah. you asked for oh, okay. my phone number, oh, I and did. I'm like, oh, okay. I, I'm not going to pick up the phone. I can give you my phone number, but you'll never reach me. Um, <laughs> and then she's like, what about an email address? I'm like, well, you can email me too, and it'll I, no guarantees that I'll respond, but feel free. And so I gave her my it. email address, <laughs> and that was the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is hilarious. So, you, okay, so <laughs> that's how you all met. But how did it? How did it escalate then? Since you gave, did you give the real number then? I have questions. So I, I gave my phone number because I seriously, um, at that time, I was working in uh, in a fitness industry job, and I never picked up the phone. We didn't have cell phones a long time it's a long ago. Time ago, um, <laughs> and so I didn't like really. I knew I wouldn't answer the phone number. But I gave an email and I love to write and I love words. And so we started having this online exchange, this email exchange. And I was actually just trying to sort it out. I was trying to be like, yeah, yeah, you know, dime to a dozen average dyke lesbian, proto whatever. Dyke, proto white dyke, right? Like, you know, five foot seven. I look like Rachel so, Maddow. I look like, you know. <laughs> Really, there are a million of us out there. There's so it's just trying to, you know, just unique. discern <laughs> it. And um, what really happened is I asked really difficult questions. Like I asked questions about gender identity. I, um, there were a lot of people that I was watching transition and I'd helped a lot of people through that and, you know, shepherded people through the difficulty of having an adolescence as an adult. And I was like, yeah, I'm not, I, I don't want that. I, I'm not looking for that. Um, and so I asked a lot of, and I, I have questions about that. And I've, I've raised, been raised as a feminist and became more of a feminist and more of a womanist as I've grown. And so I was like really trying to not get there. <laughs> I was trying to resist. I resist, resist. And her answers kept coming back stronger and stronger. And, and, um, and I love a brain. Um, and I think that one of the things that we established was, I mean, now it's a joke, is that um, a perfect come online that she didn't quite use in that first encounter was, I've got books. <laughs> I have books. <laughs> Would you like to come over and see my books? <laughs> let, it, let it be known that being smart pays off. Right? Yes, it does. Right? Yes. right? <laughs> I, I, it pays off. It it does does pay off. off. And having books, it's and having so books. Woof. 
representation of the smartness, in other words. Yes. Yes, I'm good. Yeah. Being a reader. Yeah. An active, engaged, growing, continuing to evolve. Like you can't read books and be unchanged. This is actually funny. Absolutely, I agree with that. There's no point in reading a book if it's not going to transform you in some way. Yeah, that's right. Point. And I'm looking for something. One of the things we. I'm sorry, just like scooted away from the interview. It's all right. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, no, okay. One of the things. So, one of the things we did early like a couple years into the relationship was I went and I printed out our entire email correspondence from that first year or two and put them in three ring binders because it was, I lived in Northern Virginia, Jesse lived in Baltimore um, and we would go more than a month between being able to see each other yep. just because of life circumstances. And so it really was the written word that connected us. Um, and we had this written record. And so, yeah, we printed it out so that if we ever have to remember <laughs> what stupid thing we said or what worked or what didn't work, like it's right there. You can't get around it. So, yeah. Pastor Pam and I have a very similar email record. Now you gave me, an, you've given me an idea for Valentine's Day 2020. There you go. Yep. It's, <laughs> I got you. I got you. <laughs> Facebook, you all out there taking tips now. You have two couples yes. here. It's good stuff. It's Emails good. are good. We can also go back and say, you said this. Yes. You did say it. You said it earlier on. I have it right here. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. This is great. So this is very good. Thank you so much for that for answering that question. You guys, that was very transparent, authentic. Obviously, I, I actually don't even know. Let's, let's go to the next question. Um, so you are married. All right, so this is, what do you love to do together right now? Like, what is your preferred loving to do togetherness? You, you know what happened this past year, right? <laughs> We've been locked in the house together for a year. <laughs> yeah, um, so here's the interesting part is that um, we have, have a really wide ranging network of, of friends and connections and a lot of partnerships and couples and families had a lot of difficulty being underfoot basically all the time. Um, we joke that, you know, we'll sit around and literally watch the dogs, not watch TV, not watch, watch movie. We're just going to watch the dogs. <laughs> and this past year has really given us an opportunity to get um, more vulnerable and more intimate and closer to each other than previously, because we have all this time. We, early on in the pandemic, we took a, a vacation, which we like to like take a cabin that's us and the dogs and everything else is off. That was before the pandemic. That was February, you're right. Was it was just before. Um, and like, I was able to reveal to Lori some things that I really, like we hadn't really talked about that were moving. And when you're together with someone for over 10 years. What did say over 10? <laughs> Um, like you change if you're growing, you know, if you keep on reading books, um, and then <laughs> you change and, uh, and we just had time to really talk about those ways that we've evolved over the time. Yeah. What else do you we like to do? We, you know, it's, it's, it's really hard to say because of this space that we're in, right. We're in this kind of emerging from a pandemic space, mm -hmm. um, and we really have been locked in the house for a year. And at the same time, neither of us is like trying to run away from the house every day, right? Like we got very, very grounded with each other in a way that, um, and we've talked about it, right? Because what else are you going to do? Right? So <laughs> we've talked about it. Um, we've gotten very, very grounded with each other and have hit like a whole and a whole new level of kind of connectedness and trust and kind of ability to envision a future um, that we couldn't have envisioned a year ago because literally, yeah. literally because of how we are with each other. I mean, basically we'll do anything together, um, <clears throat> anything at all. And we'll have a good time. That's pretty much, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we even gone to a baseball game, and yeah, right. that was fun. <laughs> Amazing, and I'm glad you surfaced that. Actually, I don't think we had even thought about um, even dialoguing about relationship through the pandemic, and I will be very honest. Um, 
it was scary. You know, you kind of not, I'm not gonna say for us, but I really watched, I really watched a lot of my friends. Um, they learned about their partners or their spouses for the first time, it seems, you know, and I'll just speak past the Benita and I, we are extremely busy. I mean, we would kind of meet up at night because we were either coming in from school, coming in from other activities, you know, running around with the children. And so you had really about two or three hours with your significant other and you did not realize. And then you're like, oh, you're still here for breakfast and lunch you know? <laughs> and dinner and, and dinner. dinner. What's going on? Uh, well, what are we going to eat, right? right? And so yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. that is that was, yeah, it was really good to hear because um, there was some storms that took place in relationships throughout this past year. And we do know people getting yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah, that there were time. pandemic breakups yeah. that were like long term relationships. Yeah. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. And I think that this is so paramount in understanding that, um, you know, we, there are ways to figure that out. And I think very little exposure is to people that you feel that you can call and talk to through, through that time, especially like you said, 10 plus year relationship. How do we call our, our friends and tell them that we are in a space, right? And, and goodness, the therapist is not available. <laughs> They're online. You know, how do you talk about your spouse and your spouse is in the other room, right? Uh, can hear everything. <laughs> yes. We're not having to Yes, room, no, but, but it is good to know that, um, you know, there are people out here and we are making conscious efforts to figure this thing out, you know, and I'm excited to see what this post pandemic relationships look like. And I want to, and I want to lift up something that both of you said that I, that it was really important communication mm -hmm. and vulnerability mm -hmm. and how sometimes we, even in our relationships, uh, forget to be vulnerable to our spouses, our significant others, our girlfriend, boyfriend, day friends, whatever that might be. And so we have to be able to stay vulnerable with, with our, our, our significant others and then communicate that vulnerability uh, appropriately. And so there's a level of, of self-awareness and um, being able to identify the transformation and the growth as, as Jesse has pointed out so wonderfully that has taken place within you before you ever think that your partner could have identify it first. So you haven't noticed I changed. What well, do you know you've changed? Like, what <laughs> right. have, you know, how have you changed? What, can you can you voice that to me? And so that's wonderful. And so thank you all. Thank you both for sharing that that important piece of that, that grounded work. It takes hard work. Yeah. Grounding work. And to jump on. And I just want to, you know, to, cool. to um, be okay with updating your love languages. And this is for our Facebook family. Be okay yeah. with just retracting back and say, are we still where we were? You know, like you mentioned about the emails. Let's take a look at these emails. Who were we back then? We've grown up together, right? But love, our love languages may change and it may even change through situations. So being okay with taking a step back and, and re-looking at how you love and how you express love and how you need love. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What I was going to say is that, like, you know, one of the things we've learned, um, not just this past year, but through the course of our relationship, is like just because you have gray hair doesn't mean you know what you're doing when it comes to communication and every right. You know, like I've got a lot of experiences with relationship, but like I'm still doing work on the day, on you know, every day to try and you know be better at all of this. It's not it's not conscious all the time, but like one of the things I was going to lift up is that Jesse and I are both uh, involved in recovery communities. I've been sober in AA for 27 years. Jesse's been active in Al-Anon for teens for more than 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we share not only, you know, like we, we do share like a common faith, you know, background and we do share kind of that language, but we also share that kind of spiritual language around 12 step programs where it helps that kind of uh, lubricant, you know, just that kind of it gives us the language to use where we can communicate with each other about things that are hard, right? Because it's not like it's not like it's all sunshine and unicorns all the time. I mean, it is most of the time. And that's the amazing thing, right? There are basically unicorns living in our house and like sun, <laughs> sun and like rain rainbows shooting out of it but every now and then we hit a hiccup and we have to kind of get that stuff you know put together I mean we just had a tough conversation a couple of days ago about yeah. something and it was just like all right here's the thing and we just need to talk about it we need to sort out how we're going to navigate this and you know the good thing is is that so far we've figured out <laughs> how to do it yeah yeah that's awesome mm -hmm.
Good. Thank question. you. All right. Next yeah, question. Awesome. Um, what is one of the one areas that you've learned how to extend grace toward one another? It's mm -hmm. an excellent question. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want a minute? Do um, I'm going to take a minute. Would you like to? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, so it's funny. There, there's a way that we're compatible in general that occasionally we're not, and that is <laughs> tidiness around the house. <laughs> And so, like, the good thing is that we both have a tolerance for disorder that means that when it's disorderly, we're both still okay <laughs> running through the world. Um, but there are things that Lori will never, okay, not never, will not do of her own. No, you've even done it of your own accord now. <laughs> so it used to be that I could count on Lori to not do any dishes at all, period, ever under any circumstances. Um, and it's something that I do, like for me, it's really, it's a meditation. It's a Buddhism thing. Like it's fine. I can wash the dishes and it gives me a minute. It makes me not do something else for just a minute so that I can be, you know, let go of what is going on. Just get some, get rid of some dirt, clean stuff up a little bit. And, um, and so the grace I've been able to extend is around the, the, the times and ways and places where I'm like, um, I need order and you're not going to make that happen. And if I make it like, it's not going to stay that way. Um, and I'm like, a catch. <laughs> <laughs> like clear countertops, like those are magical. <laughs> so um, like we figured out what works, which is that like I own the kitchen. And that works. I um, mow the yard. That's you know. Ding. <laughs> <laughs> I will never mow the yard. Never, never, never. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So extending grace. Um, you know, it's it's like a like that being kind, and it's like that extension of just being kind in this loving relationship, right, is um, that I've watched over the, I'm going to call it 14 years, we're not quite there, but I'm going to call it 14 years. I know, so close. Um, like over the 14 years, I've watched Jesse go through these amazing life transformations, kind of one after the other, after the other, after the other. Um, and, um, you know, as for some of those, I was a more distant kind of companion observer. And then for some of those, I was a lot closer. And we were, you know, um, you know, we were married and we were sending her off to school and we were, you know, we, you know, and we were bringing her back in the middle of just like this horrible job market. it's having y'all have frozen so i want to make sure you're still there okay it's that um it's making it's it's extending the grace and it doesn't it doesn't even feel like that right because that feels like something you but, okay she's changing the name so she's in it i was wondering <laughs> what she was doing with the computer <laughs> i was like what are you doing um it feels that feels like something that's bestowed, right? That feels like something that's bestowed. That's something that's like I can withhold it or I can grant it. Da da da. And that's really not what it is. It really is just about this deep and abiding love and affection we have for each other. And that you know, as she goes through these life transitions, and I mean, I'm doing you know, some. I mean, not some of them aren't nearly as big. But that basically I hold that space and I'm like, I'm here, we're here, I'm not going anywhere. You take whatever time you need, really, to figure out this piece or figure out that piece. Your home is safe, your house is safe, your pack is safe. Um, and really just take what, and we've been able to do that for each other over the years back and forth um, in a way that's really pretty amazing, you know. It's true. This is awesome. So what I what I hear what I'm hearing is even in transformative spaces when you've been with someone for a very long time is don't feel like you're losing anyone. Mm -hmm. That's just as important. Is I think sometimes when people see people grow in relationship, they get afraid as if they're going to lose them, they're going to leave them. 
or they're going to change and become somebody they don't like. But I, what I hear both of you saying, even in the dishes part, because you did mention she does dishes or she does tidiness now, right? She does tidiness now. That was Reverend Lori. She does tidiness now. And Reverend Lori pointed out how Jesse went to school and how it was this transformative process is that we have to be willing to allow each other to transform and support transformation, knowing that that's how we all grow, right? And and stay alive, even in our relationships as well, individually and collectively, right? There, there's there's something to be said about stagnation or, in my opinion, this is me talking to y'all, this is Pastor Bernice, <laughs> stillness, right? And one of the things as a, as a scientist, still water breeds bacteria, breeds pathogens and disease and you know so there's something about trans moving and dy dynamics and being a a constant not not th there's a way in which you move in sync with the season that you're supposed to be in right because you don't want to be chaotic movement right yeah. but so but when we start talking about relationships allowing your your partner or the person you're with the the opportunity to be transformative and know that they're not going to leave you in that space and to support them and vice versa and one of the things I hear is that it's not like one person sacrificed and the other person transformed. You mm -hmm. both transform together in your own ways and as a as a unit. So that I think that's wonderful. And I think a lot of times it's like, well, you go, then I'll go. And it's like, no, we can do this at the same time. And I think that that's 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 a beautiful thing. I just want to I want to highlight that and lift that up. So thank you for sharing. And I, that. And I just want to um, also say that it's okay. Um, we speak in our faith of doubt being part of faith that my understanding my god is not discomforted by my discomfort my god is not challenged by my doubt my god stays with me through that and that's what we do for each other and we model it our our understanding of the way um our higher power and and grace works in our life grows how we can be grace offer grace to one another and it's not a given thing it's it's that we're in this together. And so I've, I've been able to say, like, I need reassurance right now. Mm -hmm. And like, just ask the question, like, are we doing okay? Mm -hmm. And one of the, you know, one of the kind of interesting things that we do that not everybody does is that we're polyamorous. And so Jessica and I each have um, relationships outside of our primary marriage and we were poly when we met each other so that helps right like it's <laughs> not one of us didn't kind of drag the other one out um but right now jesse's got a really really significant relationship with somebody um up in new york that's been going on for what two and a half years three years um yeah. and it's fabulous and it's wonderful and it's loving and it um it is so i've watched the good effect it has on her um and i've just started dating somebody that's um it's looking so sweet <laughs> <laughs> just like it may turn into a little bit you know i've i've, I've had a, another person that i've dated that was part of our pod during the pandemic and and you know and she was a key member of like keeping us healthy and sane and then this new person that i'm dating really looks like it could be a really very significant long-term thing and so like we, I mean, we face that jealousy thing and that insecurity thing, like head, right? Like you leaving. <laughs> I actually was going to go talk about this person. And it's, and it's like just being able to have that conversation of like, nah, no, you're stuck with me. Like, no, <laughs> I'm not leaving. Um, and to be able to, one of the gifts of it, I think, is that it's a, we're able to envision a bigger love than we otherwise would have been. Like I, I was shocked. Okay, so this you can tell about fourteen jokes about this, and I'll let you do it after the video is over. But I was like on Zillow looking at like farm compounds up closer <laughs> to Brooklyn. So I'm like, this is where we've been heading anyway. Is just like the farm with multiple houses, and we just bring all the lovers there, and just everybody just lives there, and they bring their kids and their dogs and whatever. So I'm like chickens, chickens, chickens. <laughs> and let's let's just start shopping. Let's just forget it, you know. So like just envisioning like a and who knows what will happen or what won't happen, but just like being able to envision in even what feels like an even bigger love presence in our lives is part of the amazing piece of that, and it requires a lot of communication.
Yeah. Yes. And so it's funny, it's funny you brought it up. Because I was actually about to go that way. Um, I was going to ask you one, where did you see when the, with the scripture, mm -hmm. with the scripture, where did you all see yourself? And so you brought up jealousy. So I, I do want to go back yep. there. Um, you also talked about polyamorous relationships. So I don't know if it will not be frozen. Can you guys still hear us? <laughs> I'm going to go. Yes. Oh. There you're there. You're back. All right. All right. Thanks. <laughs> so the other question I wanted to ask was about um, the polyamorous relationship, just a little bit more about pe for people who do not know what that means, because I do believe that, um, again, as representation, the whole purpose of the series is to talk about our love is holy, right? Our, our love is divine, LGBTQ identified uh, individuals. Um, and so if you can do two parts for me, again, the scripture, just the two of us now has a whole new meaning, right? And so if you can talk about the thing, how it plays into the, the relationship you have as polyamorous, loving uh, marriage couple, as well as the scripture and where you saw yourselves in, in that scripture as well. I would love to, we would love to hear your feedback. You want me to start? Right. Um, you know what, I'll start okay. and then I'll toss it. All right, when you're done. Okay. okay, so um, I was married when we met and we were dating. Um, and that marriage um, didn't end when we started dating. It went on for a number of years. And by the time I got, I divorced that woman, we'd been together for 20 years. So I don't count that as a failure or a failed marriage. We did a ton together and um, did a lot of growing together. And there just came a point where I realized that the changes and growth that I needed for myself, I wasn't able to do them within the relationship. Um, and that was one of the reasons why it took a while for us to get married because I wasn't trying to say I'm married to two people. You know, um, that's a different thing. Um, and when we got, finally got married, we got married in Maine. Um, and we uh, got an officiant to meet us outside the Catholic Church, a Catholic Church in Maine. We went in and we were there for the service and for communion. And then we went out, stepped <laughs> outside and under St. Augustine, we, <laughs> we, uh, we said our vows and, um, and, and it was amazing, obviously, that piece. Um, and so for me, polyamory has always meant that I'm open to possibilities that I'm not going to, you know, meet someone, whether, you know, what I am as a friend or a colleague or whatever else. And I know that I don't know where that relationship might go. And so what I don't do is cut off possibilities. I let the relationship define itself and decide what it is by what we do and decide what it isn't by what we do not do and by what works. And I also had an open marriage with my first wife. And um, so I had a lot of experience coming into this marriage and coming into this relationship as someone who's poly. Um, and I think that that's the piece that I'll take around poly. And the, just the two of us, um, for me, the very first <laughs> word, just, is like the foundation is justice. And... Um, and what we do with each other and the nature of commitment and fidelity for me is about the justice with which we engage. And it is really demanding. It's absolutely not for everyone. It's hard. Um, but if, if you fall in love with a poly person, <laughs> for instance, um, you're going to have to make a decision. You're going to have to decide whether you're up to like the radical disclosure and the vulnerability that is like, it's just part of the makeup of having a relationship that where there's very different kinds of intimacy in different relationships. Um, and like, I'm just going to say one more thing and then I'm going to toss it to you. And that is, um, We're writing notes back and forth from each other. <laughs> Can I do that? Sure. All right. So um, <laughs> we've been dating for a little while and uh, 
we were just in the yard and I had my dog and Lori was doing some yard work, planting some tulips. And I was talking to my dog about Lori while she's doing this. And um, this is like in 2008 on Akintrali Terrace in July. It's 8,000 degrees outside. I want you to get the setting. <laughs> you know how those brick buildings and they face through a hill and they catch the sun in the morning, right? 8,000. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> and so I have my pit bull. Because <laughs> you're from Baltimore. Because I'm from Baltimore. And we're sitting on the marble steps because that's what we do here. And, um, and, and Lori's planting tulips. And so, you know, I'm talking about Lori. So that is, we do that. It takes a couple of hours to do that. Dig up the plant them right, do all the right things. And afterward, I'm following up and I'm like, so, you know, how was that for you? You know, basically I had you doing work for me while I just sat there with my dog petting him. And she was like, so it was good, except for this one thing. And I'm like, okay, what was this one thing? <laughs> and she was like, well, um, the, you said boy, and then you said Lori and me, and that just didn't really resonate with me. I'm like the boy thing. And Lori's like, oh no, 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 no. That part was the part that worked. But the Lori she part, what do you want me to call you then? And so starting from that moment, well, a little bit later, because she had to tell me a name. Um I for all of our dating life, this person here I refer to as Luke mm -hmm. and he. Mm -hmm. And so when I was introduced to the church community and to the family, <laughs> Poor thing. I was like, um, 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 this person over here, I love them. <laughs> and had to get like, not say Luke and not say he after years yeah. of using Lori, he, Luke, he, whoever, I Lori, she, whatever. Yeah, whoever um, and so like, that's a whole nother piece of, of what we do and how like our relationship looks a little different than some other relationships. And it's just a piece. Like that was a big part of our courtship. In our marriage today, Luke is Luke he, that's who this is. <laughs> and, and my wife. <laughs> B-O-I. W-I-F-E, w -I -F -E. yeah, wife, wife. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you understand, <laughs> um, and like Luke is a bigger person than that, than that, and Luke is Lori, and Luke does have a professional life, and a career, and a family that I love, um, and uh, yeah, so I'm going to pass it to you, okay. <laughs> anyway, we're a lot of fun to talk to. So, um, you know, like just all kinds of stuff, but um, that was really weird. But um, to the scripture passage and the kind of um, spiritual ethical side of this, right? Um, that, uh, you know, that I love that scripture passage because it talks about, you know, setting as a seal upon your heart. It talks about fidelity. It talks about you know, that loyalty of one human being to another human being. And one of the things that is, whenever I talk to somebody, well, here's the actual true story is that I found out that polyamory existed because of a class that MCC made me go to. <laughs> so I, mm -mm, no, it's the church's fault. So <laughs> that, mm. no, this is like seminary fault up in, up in Cambridge. Blame it on the church. <laughs> Yeah, back like 15 years ago. And um, yeah, a woman walked in with her two partners and I was like, wait, you can do that? <laughs> right? Um, and took it from you there. Can. You can. <laughs> um, but the, you know, the important thing about how we do this and, and different folks will call polyamory different things. They'll call it ethical non-monogamy. They'll call it open marriages. They'll call it all kinds of different things. Um, everybody kind of has their own terminology that they use. It's not like there's super standardized or anything, but the foundation of it for us is that it's ethical um, and that we have a spiritual basis to what we're doing. And so we are, um, we have full disclosure with each other and either of us can ask each other literally anything about what we're doing. Um, 
and the other person commits to answering it. And it doesn't matter how uncomfortable it is. It doesn't matter if you don't want to talk about it. It doesn't matter if it's a little bit touchy. It's just like, no, this is, we're each other's foundation. That's kind of the thing that we've established over the course of this past year is that whatever this looks like, we're kind of each other's foundation in some kind of amazing baseline way. And so that's what we need to be for each other. So we've had to navigate where, what those ethical lines look like over time. And we've screwed it up, right? Like I've screwed it up, she screwed it up, you know, intentionally, unintentionally, because new relationships are fun and you kind of lose your brain. <laughs> you know, it's just, it just kind of happens. Even if you real, even as much as I love Jesse, I will screw things up. And same, same, as much as I know she loves me, she will screw things up. But it's that piece of, you know, being clean with each other so that whatever we're, you know, as much as we can, that whatever relationships we're involved with, whether, and it really is like, we're all, I don't want to like make it sound too big, but like we all maintain a ton of relationships in our lives. And so these are just, these are, you know, outside sexual relationships, which have a possibility of screwing things up a little bit more, but we you know, we spend, we've spent a lot of time making sure that what we're doing is ethical. And for me, and I trust for Jesse, I don't know if we've ever actually talked about it, like, you know, like, make sure that God's cool with what I'm doing. Like, I pray about what I'm doing. I, I pray about the people I'm seeing. I lift them up. I ask for guidance. I, you know, and if the guidance is no, then I have to listen to that, you know, and, um, like God gets involved in these relationships in a really, really deep and meaningful way. Um, so yeah, that it really is um, ethically, spiritually based. It's a lot of fun. And, and, you know, that there's, there's, you know, there's ethics attached to it that feed into that fidelity piece. And that's what I can loop around to is that I don't remember exactly what our vows were. I'm sure we wrote them. We had to have written them down somewhere. Um, no, that's not that's it. Not it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's something else um that you know what we vowed to each other when we got married wasn't you know um you know to have and to hold from this day forward and to the exclusion of all others we we vowed fidelity to each other which is whatever our agreements are like acknowledging that we're going to change acknowledge i mean and the people we were when we got married are not the people we are now and that's just true that the what we both want is to be faithful to the current understanding whatever that may be and that gives us room to grow and change as, as people and to encourage each other's growth right like i basically just say go go have fun go see what that is <laughs> go see what that possibility is and come back and tell me about it and let's see how it's going to fit into who we are right oh and how, yeah and how amazing is that so and it also means fidelity within those relationships. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we don't enter into a relationship and without transparency about right. what we are in as much as we know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ain't nobody dating me thinking I'm single. Mm. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's some really good points here um, for those who may be interested in polyamorous relationships. The one again, the communication, transparency, making sure there's a solid foundation that, that both people are on the same page of what what is expected in the relationship and how to maneuver in those spaces. So again, um, we're not polyamorous, but to those who are polyamorous, I want to make this very like you are giving some really good tips to people who are identified. Thank you all for that. That's wonderful. And I think that you even kind of hit on the second question that I wanted to pick, bring up. And then this is the end of our questions. And then um, if the ministers, if you have any questions, I want you all to have the opportunity to ask as well. And I think you almost hit on this a little bit already. What would you tell people in our community who are married and or single, looking to be married or single not looking to be married? Um, and what kind of advice would you give? And I know, although you've been together for 13, over 10, right? Over, <laughs> over a decade, you know, what, what can you, what can you, you know, what can you tell, what would you say? Like, what would you tell people? as far like in advice as to what like looking for a relationship like they're wondering like that kind of thing uh, both, both and uh, how to the space of um knowing oneself this is good that you ask for clarification because one of the things i think you guys do very well is that you you've identified yourself right you know who you are 
And so therefore you're able to share that equally with, with your, uh, your partner, your spouse, how important that is. And then whatever that looks like going forward, I, I, I want to, it's interesting, and I'm, I don't want to hijack, I want to say something really quickly, was a concept about marriage and LGBTQ, I had had a conversation once with my sister, who's also um, a lesbian, and she she uh, pointed out, and I want to also apologize, I didn't know, and I don't know if you ever told me that you had different pronouns, so I should have asked, no, uh, Reverend Lori, so I, I do. My pronouns uh, are okay. she, her, or he, him, and I go by Lori or okay. Luke, like, so really, I would have said something if it was a problem, so don't even worry about it. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay. So I'm, I'm still learning as well. So one of the quite the conversations we had is she wanted uh, LGBTQ marriage to be called something mm -hmm. else other than marriage. It's like, we can do it, just let's not call it marriage. And it was very interesting to me because, and in my mind, because I'm an equity warrior, I'm like, well, that's not equity. <laughs> <laughs> we should be able to call it the same thing <laughs> and have mm -hmm. access to that. But I also see that there's this move for, for LGBTQ identified couples to get married. And I don't know if we know mm -hmm. what that looks like because we don't have representation yeah of how to have successful same gender loving or po polymerous polyamorous relationship, whatever that might look like. And, and so there's something I just want to add, you know, whatever you can give, whatever you feel comfortable staying to or speaking to, if you had to tell them anything, you know, what would you say to them? Uh, pe whether it be, again, people who are married, people who are single wanting to be married or people who are single, like I'm okay with being yes. single. So however you, if any of that kind of resonates. Yeah, so um, I just want to say that in night, I got married the first time to my first wife in 1992. Um, it was not legal. And um, my mother raised me uh, very strange. She had lots of strange things to say about love and romance. But one of the things that um, stuck with me was her definition of marriage was an agreement between three people. Two people who are getting married to each other who are human beings and God. And the fourth party is the witness, which is the community. And that nowhere in there is the government. Nowhere in there is the government. And so that's how I came into my first marriage. Is I was like, I, I told her that I wanted to get married. And she was like, well, what do you mean it's not legal, blah, blah, blah. And I said, no, I, there's a level of commitment that I'm looking for. And if I'm not going to get that, then I will continue looking, basically. And I want it to be you, but I want a level of commitment. And we had an open relationship, so there was no question about, like, where that was. Like, we were both on the same page around that. And, um, and so we changed our names so that they matched. And we opened bank accounts. And people thought we were sisters until they saw us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> would you like to describe oh sure she's um she's this absolutely lovely um soft but black woman with um by the time i mean she went from having you know virtually shaved head to locks that i grew that i you know twist and maintain all the way down her back um stunning lovely beautiful powerful woman um and so, yeah, people thought we were sisters because we had the same last name. We can take that, whatever. Um, <laughs> but that that idea, it's funny. I was thinking you asked the first, asked the question first, Pastor Denise, was uh, that you have to know yourself and you don't get to. Like, I did not know a lot of things about who I was in 92. And they're not just the things that changed. I didn't know some things in 92 that were true of me in 92. Um, so for me, like embark upon the journey, embark upon the journey of self-discovery and know that you're going to find things that are going to surprise you. And then it's, it's easier. And you mentioned the word about grace. It's easier to embrace the journey that other people are on. If you're already aware that you don't know yourself, the way that I get to know myself is because people that I speak to and see myself in reflect me back. It's in relationship with people that I learn about myself. And it's in relationship with, with the power greater than myself, with a higher power that I learn about myself. And it's in relationship, yes, with myself. Like I have to take time. I have to take time for my relationship to me. I have to take time for my relationship to something greater. And I have to take time for my relationship to others. And um, it's, it's cyclical and, and like interdependent. 
if I give up on one of those relationships and don't give it time, um, then it, it, it kind of it fades away a little bit. And I've had times of my life where that was true or any of those relationships, either I didn't have a whole lot of people outside of my primary relationship, or I you know, wasn't taking time to myself, or I wasn't making time for my spirit, for spirituality and my higher power. And um, just try to make the space for the relationships that matter. And those are the only three I have. And what the, the anti-advice I would give, it's something great that happened a couple of years ago is that my hair turned just gray enough that all of a sudden the kids knew I was old, right? It was just like, it happened just like that. Like I was one of them one day and the next day I was not. Um, but while Jesse's been talking, like the advice I would give, or I guess more of what I've learned to do is that, um, is to be committed to the journey and not the destination um, in a relationship that, you know, I grew up, um, I grew up with a Norman Rockwell family, right? Their mom and dad, it real, I mean, yeah, I mean, they are. I mean, they, they met their first, I mean, they met their first week of college. They got married right after they graduated. They've been married for 52 years, 51 years, two kids, house in the suburbs, da, 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 da. Like I grew up with that image of permanent monogamous is doable right is completely doable like I never had any doubt um and what I found and so like I, I take that as a gift right like I don't assume relationships are going to end and I don't assume that there's an end date and I take that as a real gift from my childhood is that when you love somebody you stick with them right and that that's just something I took and that I've been able to translate that into a way of living that works for me because what was happening to me was that serial monogamy thing of a couple of years, a year and a half, two years, three years. I'm like, this isn't working, right? Like this just isn't working. Um, but for Jesse and I, and I do this with the other relationships that I'm in, you know, over time is like my commitment is to our journey, you know, to her journey and to our journey and to just love as hard as I can that whole process. And it's going to go where it goes every time We've only tried to get to a destination once or twice and we have failed miserably, <laughs> miserably. Like we're really good at making things happen. Mm -mm. When we've tried to like actually make something concrete happen, like we, we wanted to end up in California a couple of years ago, about five years ago. And it looked like it was all lining up, right? Like you're doing this, I'm doing this. <laughs> nope, <laughs> we're back in Baltimore. But we have a house. But we have a house, you know? <laughs> and so it's just like the, the, our commitment is to the journey with each other and not to some kind of concrete destination of we've got to have this or it's got to look like that or it's got to be this. It's just like, nah, I'm just in this with you, you know, and let's just do the best we can. So it makes it, it gives a space for that love. Thank you. That was a great, I great. Have to do the dishes. <laughs> and she doesn't have to mow the grass. See, that's, that's a great compromise though, right? <laughs> <laughs> but you do have to let me buy a dishwasher <laughs> i did buy i did i did help us buy a dishwasher that's my job <laughs> okay we can let's go buy a dishwasher let's go yeah, it's a good, good good compromise good compromise right there that was easy that was not i'm not an idiot <laughs> so ministers um do you have anything you would like to say to uh to jesse and reverend reverend lord Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I was just going to say that um, it's very, very uh, wonderful to, to hear you, you both speak. Um, the only question that I have, um, I think right now is um, in this pandemic space or during the pandemic space, I know you talked about being closer and getting more, getting to know each other more. What um, have you found that uh, it's easy, I guess, to be apart? Like, um, do you still have your own separate time, alone time? Um, and how does that work when you're still together? <laughs> yeah, we are very, very fortunate to, and this wasn't true five years ago, right? Like, we are very, very fortunate to be in a living space. Our home is big enough that we each have individual spaces within the home. I have a room, Jesse has a room, 
I have, I have my own office on the side of that. And then we have shared space. And so it is on a daily basis, we are in our own spaces for hours at a stretch, um, which is really the only, I have no idea how people who live in Manhattan in one bedrooms have managed this because I mean, I love you, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, being able to close the door is magic. <laughs> being able to close the door and we've got our own communities like like she talked about that, you know, our, our friend circles are kind of wide and varied and there's a decent amount of overlap, but really like my people are my people and Jesse's people are her people. and. Um, we're able and we stay connected with them pretty much separately. So that's kind of two ways we've been able to keep that sanity and not be just on top of each other. Yeah. And having outdoor spaces has oh, yeah. been really, you know, just like that's where I connect with um, with something greater. And, you know, every morning um, I go outside and if it's at all possible, I'm barefoot because I want my feet on the ground and my feet in the grass. Um, and, um, and, and I have no idea she does this because I sleep in. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I mean, it's, it's kind of the other half of the question is that we've also developed ways to, uh, to impose or interact with each other in that space. Like mm -hmm. I know what we communicate with our doors, mm -hmm. um, whether there's availability or not availability. And, and um, we've learned how to enter, um, you know, a space that could be private. And, you know, it's ridiculous. We will text each other from any place to any place yeah. inside of the house. <laughs> and Need coffee? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Good question. Thank you, Ray. I, it's always a pleasure to see you. Well, um, I really don't have a question. I am just in awe of, of the love because I, I, I can feel, I, tr I truly can feel the love and I'm just like in awe. Uh, I, I, I'm in a little budding relationship and I was just making middle notes about, okay, let's do that and do, do the other. So I just want to say thank you. That's, that's my only comment. Thank you, Lee. Always a good idea. No, this is, this is fun. Like, did you ever uh, did you ever see the movie when Harry met Sally when they have those kind of the vignettes at the beginning like I'm looking at the video stream like oh my god were those people were like the old <laughs> Mary like you know just like kidding around and making each other but it but it's like there is a real truth to it right there is a real truth that after a certain amount of time and it can be different lengths of time mm -hmm. for different people you just you know each other so incredibly well that it's just if you dare to. If you dare to, right? Yeah, I yeah. mean, just like as a contrast, um, I grew up with a mother who has been married eight times, and that's not all of her adult relationships. Um, and, um, you know, serial monogamy. Yeah. I thought it was only like five. No, it's eight. <laughs> like serial monogamy is a thing, and she wasn't very present. Like she wasn't very exposed in those relationships. And I learned a lot from that. It's a negative lesson. Like, oh, like I I may have to actually sometimes be wrong and um and have some kind of conflict with people and walk through it and come out the other side. And uh, it's good. And, well, love is great. Love is beautiful and powerful and holy. And um we've been blessed with a really deeply spiritual connection that has manifested in, oh, so many really um, wide varying ways. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys are awesome. This is awesome. Uh, we wanna thank you again for your time and, and the fact that you guys have been so transparent with us. We appreciate you. We know that this is going to bless so many people, even on the replay. Um, so Facebook, MCC Baltimore, make sure that you like, tag, and share this video and the service so that people can see, again, that our love is holy and that LGBTQI relationships are a heterogeneous type of situation and they don't all look the same. And you don't have to emulate your parents, yes. right? You don't have to emulate the only thing you've ever seen in life, which may have not even been marriage, but oh, maybe just singleness and, you know, so there's a way of being well. So you have to figure out what makes you whole, what makes you well, and then learn to exist in that space and maybe with another person. 
right? And so thank you. Thank so you much. both. And I want to, um, oh, I'm sorry. No, thank you. Oh, absolutely. I want to highlight now, one of the things we wanted our um, speakers to do, MCC Baltimore and family that are watching on Facebook, is to pick an LGBTQI charity uh, and for that we may bless as a collective unit together. And so um, Reverend Lori and Jesse picked the Baltimore Safe Haven with I love you. And, uh, yes, and so we are so grateful for you all picking that charity, that, non that nonprofit organization, and we are going to honor um, and give donation accordingly to that charity on behalf of you as well as MCC Baltimore. So thank you. Thank you. Yep. So before we leave and get ready for communion, I want to know if Reverend Lori or and or Jesse, I'm not mixing it, if would you like to give a prayer for those that are married or and or not, or however that you have the Lord or the spirit that you believe in leaves you, you would like to pray. <laughs> oh. And I'm gonna pause for a moment. Let the Holy Innocent make space for all the names that are holy. Bless all people in their love, their love for one another of all varieties and in all colors, shapes, and sizes. Bless those who are married and wish to marry those who are single and wish to be single. Bless the love that binds us together. Be in us. Move and live through us. Thank you. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. MC Baltimore, you know what time it is. Uh, please go grab your bread or your crackers or your juice for the representation of wine um, and or bring wine, you know how we do. And we will be back with communion shortly. All right. All right, MCC Baltimore, thank you so much for rejoining us for communion. We are going to begin with Reverend Lori.
All right, MCC Baltimore, thank you so much for rejoining us for communion. We are going to begin with Reverend Lori starting us off. Reverend Lori. Thank you. On the night that Jesus was to be betrayed, he gathered in, in October for a feast with his friends and his disciples. And he took the bread from the table and he blessed it and he broke it and he passed it to those gathered saying, take and eat all of you. This is my body, which will be broken for you. As often as you eat of it, remember me. In like manner, after the meal, he took the cup and he blessed it and he passed it to those who were gathered there with him and said, take, drink, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant, my life, was, which is poured out for you and for many. As often as you drink it, you will remember the sacrifice that was made for you. Please pray with us. Gracious God, our creator, we invite you to pour out your spirit on us and on these gifts of fruit and grain. As we partake of this meal, bless these elements that we share. May they embody the living presence of Christ, that we might become your healing presence, feeding a hungry world in the name of all that is holy, righteous, just, and pure. In Jesus' name, amen. Please join me as I proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. And Christ will come again. Amen. Amen. Although we are not together in person, we are together in spirit. Because of this, we can share in the life and covenant of Christ collectively. Please take the bread or cracker and partake of it with us, knowing that this is the promise of a new life in God. Please take the juice and partake of it with us knowing that this is the promise of a new covenant in God. Amen. MCC Baltimore, give your hearts and likes for Reverend Lori and Jesse on Facebook. We are so grateful for everything and all the wisdom that you poured into us um, so selflessly on today. And we pray that God will restore whatever time that was taken, amen, but that everything you have needed, <laughs> I know, right? That whatever like, time can be restored. That okay. everything you need, um, everything you need, uh, God will provide for both of you, amen. And so we wanna thank each of you also for joining our Love is Holy Sunday Service Encounter. Uh -oh. Come back next Sunday. We have whole new guest couples. It's going to be phenomenal. You're going to want to join us all Pride Month long. Let us pray. May the God of your understanding keep you, protect you, and guide you as you come to embrace the fullness of who you are as you are in the earth. May you bear fruit of freedom, love, and compassion in this season. May our Lord shine her face upon you and extend unmeasurable grace to you and your family as you continue to endure with pride. May the love of Christ that surpasses all knowledge fill your inner being and may the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in the sight of the God of faithfulness, our creator and redeemer. Amen. Amen. Bless Amen. Amen. Bye Facebook, we love y'all. Love you guys. Thank you. Hello, Dr. Harris. How are you?